Hello and welcome to Pulse Check with Archer Nursing, where nursing comes to life. In this podcast, you give us 15 minutes of your day and we'll take one complicated nursing topic and make it easy. Ready for nursing to be fun? I'm Morgan and today we're tackling compartment syndrome. Let's get started with our practice question. Remember, we are going to tuck this away for later and circle back to the right answer at the end of the episode. So the nurse is caring for a client who has developed compartment syndrome of their left lower extremity. After calling for a rapid response, the nurse's assessment and receiving an order for emergency surgery, which priority action should the nurse take? So A, medication reconciliation, B, reassessing vital signs, C, providing an update to the client family, or D, transporting the client to the OR. So to understand what's going wrong in compartment syndrome, we have to first get the anatomy and physiology of our limbs. Muscle in the arms and legs are grouped into sections called compartments, and each of those compartments is wrapped up tight in a layer of tissue called the fascia. Honestly, think of the fascia like thick, tough cling wrap. It is going to bundle and hold everything in place, the muscles, the nerves, and the blood vessels. But the kicker is that that cling wrap doesn't stretch. It is a fixed compartment. So imagine if something causes swelling inside one of the compartments, let's say a trauma, a fracture, a crush injury, a snake bite, even just like super intense exercise. You've now got swelling in this fixed, inflexible space, and pressure starts to build inside of it. The fluid, the blood, the swelling, that just keeps accumulating, but there's nowhere for it to go. So that pressure starts to squeeze on everything inside the compartment, and it squeezes the small blood vessels shut. That cuts off the flow of oxygen and nutrients to the muscles and nerves that are trapped inside the compartment. And once that pressure builds past the capillary perfusion pressure, basically meaning it is more than the blood trying to get to that compartment, blood can't get through. So we get ischemia. We don't got blood flow. We're not getting oxygen. In the long term, that turns into necrosis or cell death because our cells cannot live without oxygen. And if you don't relieve that pressure in six hours or less, the damage is permanent. Muscles and nerves are dying. And that's why compartment syndrome is one of our true orthopedic emergencies. So let's break it down another way. Think of your muscle component as a crowded subway train. Normally, everything fits okay, but imagine 20 more people suddenly shove their way into that car and the door slams shut. Nobody can move. The air is thin. It's stifling. Someone's about to pass out. And that is what's going on inside the limb. The cells are suffocating, and unless you open the doors and release that pressure, things are going to go downhill. So where do we usually see this happen? Lower leg and the forearm, those are your classic locations because the compartments are smaller and the fascia there is pretty tight. Your thigh has a little more wiggle room, so it's less common, but it can happen. And if it does happen, it is super severe. Now, what are the causes? What can cause this pressure to go up in the compartment? Trauma is a big one, usually a fracture. It can also be a vascular injury, a bleeding disorder, anticoagulation, intense repetitive exercise, or an improperly applied cast that is too tight. Basically think anything that increases the pressure in that fixed space has the potential to set off this dangerous chain reaction. We recognize it with the hallmark six Ps. Pain out of proportion, paresthesia, pallor, paralysis, pulselessness, and pocolothermia. Really fancy word. It just means it's cool to the touch, okay? And all of the six Ps basically just mean poor perfusion, all right? Pallor, we're pale. Paralysis or paresthesia, we can't really feel or move. The pulselessness, we are not getting the blood flow, the perfusion to that area. That is what sets off those symptoms, But really the key kind of like buzzword that if you're taking a test and you see you should be thinking compartment syndrome is that first one, pain out of proportion to the injury, okay? Especially with like passively stretching it 
And that is the earliest, most reliable sign. You passively stretch that area, pain out of proportion to like what you see. And they're saying, oh my gosh, 10 out of 10, they're about to pass out from the pain. That should make you pay attention and think compartment syndrome. The takeaway I want you walking home with is that time is tissue. If you suspect compartment syndrome, the most important thing you can do is don't wait. Don't assess. Don't, you know, diddle around. You escalate and you get them to surgery. What we have to do is relieve that pressure. We do that with a fasciotomy. That fascia, that cling wrap that's, you know, keeping the compartment all together. We got to open it up. We got to open the doors of that subway car. The fasciotomy is where the surgeon takes a knife and literally cuts open the fascia and that relieves the pressure. It is the only way to save the muscle and prevent permanent disability. All right. Bottom line, compartment syndrome is about pressure building in a closed space. It cuts off the circulation and oxygen and it can lead to irreversible damage. The priority is to act fast and get them to surgery so we can open up that fascia with a fasciotomy. All right, so our client story to walk through here today. We've got a 37-year-old man playing in a rugby match. Nothing was too dramatic, but he took a fairly hard hit to the lower part of his right thigh. At the time, he was like, it's mildly tender, whatever. It's obviously not going to keep him from playing. He's playing his rugby game. But within an hour, that just kind of like dull ache got deeper, sharper, and more intense. And by the time three hours had passed, he had come on in to the emergency department. He knew something was wrong. Just looking right at his leg, I mean, there were no bones sticking out. There was a little bit of a bruise, but it was nothing emergency department alarming. But he was saying 10 out of 10 pain, something is wrong. So think back to under the surface. Remember, that thigh is divided up into compartments. We have those tight enclosed spaces with the muscles, the nerves, the blood vessels wrapped in the tough layer of fascia. It keeps it all in place, but it's not stretchy. So he got hit in the thigh. It got some swelling going on. And it was swelling and swelling. That pressure was pushing on that fascia, that cling wrap. And there was nowhere for it to go. So on assessment, again, I don't like see bones poking out or anything. What I do see is that it is swollen and tense. Classically, that pain is out of proportion to what I see. The skin over that area is pretty pale. It's cool to the touch, that poikilothermia. Now, there's no pulses really in that region that I was assessing, but I do just overall see it's pale, it's cool, it's kind of mottled. He can't feel the area very well when I'm touching on it, that paresthesia. So I'm thinking poor perfusion. We are really not getting blood flow to the area. And why is that dangerous? Okay, remember, we've got pressure in a compartment pushing back, and that pressure is starting to get above the capillary perfusion pressure, eventually just blocking out the blood flow. Blood cannot get in here. So everything in that compartment is suffocating. The pressure is squeezing everything out. We're leading to ischemia. And within a matter of hours, it's going to turn in to necrosis and that muscle is going to be dead. We will not be able to save it. That's why it is so time sensitive. So as soon as all of those pieces come into play, we got to go to the OR. We need to do a fasciotomy. That's the definitive treatment for compartment syndrome. Surgically slicing open the fascia to release the pressure. We got to open the door of that subway car and let some people out. So that is your immediate acute life-saving action. But there is going to be a lot of long-term follow-up after that fasciotomy. For this particular young gentleman, he had a large, large opening on the front of his thigh. 
that required skin grafting. Our focus is really going to shift onto wound care, preventing infection, really good nutrition so that we can have good wound healing because we are going to have a major, major wound. But we have saved the tissue because we have opened up that compartment and let the pressure out. That's what you really need to focus on with compartment syndrome. Time is tissue. Make sure you look for those six P's to assess for perfusion. Pain out of proportion to the injury should be kind of an indicator for you. And knowing your priority is to get that fasciotomy. So with that being said, let's circle it on back to our practice question and see now if you get that right answer and understand why. So remember, the nurse is caring for a client who has developed compartment syndrome of their left lower extremity. They called a rapid response, they assessed, and they got an order for emergency surgery. So what is our priority action? We've got A, performing a medication reconciliation, B, reassessing their vital signs, C, updating their family, or D, transporting them to the operating room. So these are all perfectly appropriate actions of med rec, vital signs, family updates. Those are not bad things to do, but I hope by now you know. The priority is to get them to the OR. Time is tissue. If we don't relieve that pressure with a fasciotomy, then we are going to have ischemia leading to necrosis and irreversible damage. So that is it for compartment syndrome. You recognize those signs and you prioritize getting to the OR for that fasciotomy right future nurses that is a wrap if you found this pod helpful i'd love to continue supporting your nursing journey through nursing school the nplex continuing ed and beyond archer nursing has you covered with on-demand video lectures high yield question banks live case study reviews and so so much more we want to help you master tough concepts and make it fun so join us over at archerreview.com Follow us on socials at Archer Nursing for more free nursing tips and study resources. Thanks for tuning in to Pulse Check with Archer Nursing. I'm Dr. Morgan Taylor, and I'll see you back next time.